Hey guys, before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to read a quick message from today's sponsor, GlowFX. GlowFX makes top of the line rave diffraction glasses, goggles, lasers, LED fiber optic space whips, light show gloves, and so much more. I've been using their products since 2017 and can safely say that the quality and the options that they have are truly incredible. You guys can shop the rave gear at glowfx.com and use code Emma K for 10% off your orders. That's code Emma K for 10% off your orders at GlowFX. The lineup drop is like, that's cute. That's cute. Look at that cute little lineup of all these artists. We're probably not going to see half of them because the set times that's when the real ish goes down and you guys know what I'm talking about. Hey there, welcome to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. Hosted by me, Emma Capotis. Each week, I'll be covering everything from dance music culture, industry news, trending topics, and festival tips, advice, and reviews. You can also expect to hear stories from ravers, artists, business owners, and more. Tune in every Wednesday for your weekly dose of peace, love, unity, and respect. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I'm your host, Emma Capotis. We got a very raspy voice today, fam. Okay, I feel like I have party girl voice. (laughs) I literally had my housewarming on Saturday. I moved into this house in September, so it's been almost a year, but we finally, obviously, with like COVID and everything, we finally had our housewarming. We had a barbecue here on Saturday. I'm recording this on Monday. We're late this week. Um, but I still have party girl voice. I don't know. I can't handle it. You turn 30 and you just, you know, hangovers are not the same. Anyway, I hope you guys all are having an incredible week so far. Today I'm back with a shorter episode. Um, this was one, this was kind of impromptu this week. I'm not going to lie, but somebody left a comment. I think it was a comment or a DM and they were like, can you talk about how you make decisions when you have a set time conflict? And I was like, that is genius. Yes, we need to speak about this more because I totally feel you. If you guys are like new to raving or new to music festivals, if you've always struggled with this, I, I'm going to walk you through like my rhyme and reason for making decisions um, when I face set time conflicts because it happens all the time. So that's what we're talking about today. And we're going to be straight to the point, fill this full of tips and advice. And I'm going to read your comments because you guys left a lot on Facebook. So we're going to get into all that today. Before we dive into things, uh, you guys know the drill. If you are enjoying this podcast, it is a huge, huge help if you could rate and review. Seriously, if somebody could drop a review today, that is huge. Um, More importantly, share this with a friend. If you think somebody will find this information helpful or somebody is looking for a community or friends online, you know, send them Rave Culture Cast. Um, And with all that being said, the other thing I want to mention, I am now an Insomniac affiliate, which is so exciting. So I've got your hookup for tickets, you guys. I currently have tickets for EDC Orlando, Beyond Wonderland, Three Points, Escape, and Lost in Dreams. Oh, and I have Okeechobee for next year as well. So if you guys ever need tickets, feel free to shoot me a DM. Um, I'm going to link EDC Orlando tickets in here today because that lineup just dropped and those tickets are going to sell out. No questions asked. So make sure you get your tickets for this year. Okay. With all that being said, let's dive right into it. Let's talk about set time conflicts. I feel like the lineup drop, the lineup drop is like, that's cute. That's cute. Look at that cute little lineup of all these artists. We're probably not going to see half of them because the set times, that's when the real ish goes down. And you guys know what I'm talking about. You get the lineup months in advance. Set times usually don't come out until like two weeks, sometimes the week of a music festival. And that's what really matters because that's when you'll actually see who you're going to be able to see at the event. Like once you've got the breakdown, you've got the stage breakdown. Now you've got to figure out, okay, here's the lineup. Here's who I'm actually going to see in reality. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, The reality is you're not going to see everybody that you want to, most likely. Especially, I feel like the more and more you get involved in this scene, you fall in love with more and more artists. That's how I feel now. I'm like, oh my God, in the beginning, I knew like a handful of people. So that made it really easy. Now I feel like I know like the undercard and there's so many exciting new talent. So it becomes even harder to figure out who you're going to end up going to see. So 
there are definitely some ways that I like to kind of like break this down and figure out like how I'm going to plan my night at a festival. Um, one thing I want to mention, I'm super type A, I'm OCD. Like I create a spreadsheet of pretty much almost every festival that I go to. If not a spreadsheet, I just do it in my notes and I'll break the you know lineup down by day once you know who's playing each day. And then, especially for EDC Las Vegas, I've done this all five years I've gone. My group did this for this year as well. We have different tabs for each of the days. Then we drop in who we want to see and then we color code it. So we call them like non-negotiables. Those are your artists that like absolutely no matter what, you're not missing them. Like 100%. Everybody has a, usually a couple, maybe it's like less than five each of your non-negotiables. So those are the absolutely can't miss artists. So that's usually how I approach the lineup when I see it and then when I get the day by day lineup then once you get the set times then I'll reorder my list so if it's in my notes I'll reorder all the people I want to see um, and then I'll write the stage name next to them so this starts to help me like visualize what my night is going to look like so that I can figure out like okay realistically who can I fit in or worst case scenario when you have two of your non-negotiables playing at the exact same time and they're on opposite ends of the festival. Like that's worst case scenario. And that has happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to a lot of you guys. So this is when you got to start figuring out, okay, where's the compromise going to be? Like, who are we going to see? What do I need to consider to help make my decision? So let's dive into my list, guys. These are the factors that you should consider to help you make a decision when you have like a brutal set time conflict. So first and foremost, how far away are the stages from one another? Because... I personally have split my time in the past. Some people might not like this. Some people say it's like not worth it because you kind of like an hour isn't even a long time, right? In the scheme of things, like these artists are incredible, especially like house and techno. An hour is like absolutely nothing. But let's consider how far away are the stages from one another? Because if I can split my time, say it's like EDC Las Vegas and, you know, Circuit Grounds is right next to Quantum Valley. If I can walk back and forth, then it probably wouldn't be that bad to do like 30 minutes of one, 30 minutes of another. The other thing to consider, how long is the set? Because depending on the event, some sets are an hour and a half. So if it's an hour and a half set and you can do 45 minutes and 45 minutes, that's not too bad either. Again, I would say I would only split it if they're like two of your favorite artists of all time. If it's like your favorite artist and then an artist you'd really like to see, I don't know if it'd be worth splitting it. Um, which brings me into my next factor to consider. Have you seen the artist recently? Or will you be able to see them again very soon? For example, this fall, I'm probably going to see Eric Prids four or five times. <laughs> like literally he's playing Arc Music Festival, which is my first festival back. He's playing as Cerez D with the back to back with Adam Bayer. He's playing as himself. He's playing a Prida after set, which I'm, I don't think we're going to. Then he's playing EDC Las Vegas. Is he playing... I don't think he's on EDC Orlando, but then I'm seeing him. He's coming to New York in November and I'm seeing him play his own show, which is like if you're going to go see an artist on tour, I know it's different than a festival set, but these are all things you can should consider. So have you seen them recently? Will you see them again very soon? Are they on another lineup? A lot of these artists are. I would factor that in and I would probably go see the person that you haven't seen recently or maybe you've never seen them. So definitely compromise. Like if one of my friends in our group, in our rave fam, really wants to see another artist that's the same time as Eric Prids, I would probably, you know, I'd probably drag them to Eric Prids, let's be honest. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'd probably like, depending on the event, uh, unless it's EDC, like if it's a special set, like I will never miss a Seven Lions or Eric Prids EDC set. But, you know, for whatever reason, if it's like a double, uh, that actually happened. Let's just use Eric Prids as another example. He played twice at Electric Zoo in 2019. He played main stage on Friday and then he played his alias Prida on Saturday, which is my favorite. If if one of my friends had said like, I really want to see this other person who is the same time as Prids because I have the opportunity to see him twice in one weekend, I would obviously like compromise there. So consider if you're going to see them again. Uh, next thing I would consider, is this your first time seeing them? If it is, I would recommend going because if you've never seen them before, it's you just want to get in there. You know what I mean? Like you want to have that experience. I would highly recommend it. This is why I say like look at the undercard and the lineup as well, because some of those upcoming artists, you want to catch them early in their career. 
not that many people are onto them just yet and they're fire and it's probably a smaller stage and the vibes will be immaculate like go see an artist for the first time um another thing to consider is it a rare or a special set so what i mean by this is it a back-to-back if it's a back-to-back that's very rare and it's probably not going to happen again go see the back-to-back because those are really special energy the artists sometimes most likely are friends like you get a little bit of both artists coming together and it's always an incredible vibe so if it's a special set like that or like let's say you know excision does his detox sets like something like that where it's like you know this artist presents sudden death presents void like if it's something along those lines that's different Um, or like Joyride presents an all drum and bass set like what the fuck that sounds absolutely incredible don't miss that because you don't know when those opportunities will come up again so think about that Um, next thing to consider would you have to split up from your friends so people have mixed feelings about this in my past with my rave fam when I was a rave baby it was like a rule for us we wouldn't split up from each other especially at EDC Las Vegas like if you do not have a good meeting spot and y'all are getting lit that night good luck to you trying to find each other late later so normally if it's like you and your rave fam have non-negotiables that are playing the same time and you would have to split up just think about if that's something you guys really want to do or not um because you you know you don't have issues you obviously still want to go see your favorite artist so a lot of people would say like go do your thing go solo which I don't disagree with I think that could be a really good option just have a really really secure meeting spot in a specific time so that you can find your friends um last thing to consider is the set happening at a stage that you aren't seeing any other artists at if so I would recommend going because let's again let's just say you're like a main stage hoe and you're like I'm fucking staying at main stage the whole time I'm not moving One, I would definitely not recommend that. Like, go see some other stuff. Like, you know, broaden your horizons and go see the other stages because these festivals have so much to offer. So let's say, you know, it's Ultra and you're at main stage and the worldwide stage the entire weekend. If you see Carl Cox is playing in the megastructure and you're not going to the megastructure the rest of the weekend, go see Carl Cox. The answer is always go see Carl Cox, first of all. (laughs) Second of all, um... Go see a different stage. I would highly recommend it. Like same thing, EDC Las Vegas, each of the stages has, you know, a different genre. So even if you're not into trance or even if you're not into hard style, still go to at least one set at that stage so you can experience the vibes and just check out some different music. 10 out of 10 recommend doing that. So some other tips, like I said, ways around things. You can always split your time at two different sets if they're not that far from one another. Again, I would compromise, you know, it depends. You could either go off and do your thing solo or you could compromise with your friends. I've done both. Um, So I would definitely say, see how you feel in the moment, Um, which leads me to my next point. You can only plan so much. You know, if you know, you know, you get there, you get into the festival and shit hits the fan and your night goes out the window and you run into people and then you walk by a stage and you hear something cool. So you go in. You know, things change in the moment so quickly. Time flies by. So you may end up going to a set that you didn't think you would like and you end up loving it. And then you stay there and you miss somebody else. Like there's so many decisions that happen like game time decision. You change your mind in the moment. Perfect example. I think EDC 2018, no, 2017, we had the worst. We had Dylan Francis at the same time as Above and Beyond. And we were pissed (laughs) because those were two non-negotiables for the whole group. We're like really above and beyond is like iconic EDC memories, like amazing vibes, incredible. Same thing with Dylan, totally different vibe, super fun. You're going to be throwing it back and forth, like best vibes. So what we decided to do, they were on opposite ends of the festival as well. It was main stage and circuit grounds, which is probably a 20 minute walk by the time you get in and out of the crowd. We went to Dylan first. Stay, they were hour and a half sets. We went to Dylan first. We were like, we're going to stay 45 minutes and then we're going to go to above and beyond wrong okay because dylan was so fire we looked at each other about 30 minutes in and we were like yeah we're not leaving and guess what i've seen above and beyond plenty of times after that like that's when you just have to decide it is what it is are we really going to waste 20 minutes of both sets like walking back and forth like that's so pointless so things change in the moment you never know what's going to happen again be open and willing to go with the flow change direction and adapt in the moment Uh, It's not worth a fight. It's not worth an argument with your friends. I can promise you do not waste a single 
minute of your time in a negative energy. Like you have so much to be grateful for to be there. Do not waste any time arguing, you know, do not ruin a moment for yourself. So in most cases, I hope you guys would be able to see that artist again if you would miss them. So with all that being said, you guys, those are all my tips. I'm going to get into your comments because you were all cracking me up. Um, So I posted in our Facebook group community, which if you guys aren't already a part of it, you should totally be because we always do questions like this and I can feature your comments. So I said, serious question, you guys, how do you handle set time conflicts? Cammy said, I run. (laughs) She's like, LLJK. I usually do try to make both. Um, Ryan said, Cammy, I straight up sprinted from one end of Grant Park to the other one year at Lala. Never again. See, when you got to go, you got to go. You can just run it out. Amanda said, I cry, LOL, but my group usually votes and we see what and we see the set that we decide on. We also look at the other sets we want to see and make decisions based off of what stage we'll be at slash are close to and we really don't like splitting sets that's another good point Amanda made by the way I should have factored this in too you don't only focus on the exact set time you focus on the set before it and the set after it so like let's say again in that situation Dylan Francis and above and beyond let's say the next artist we wanted to see after that time slot was at main stage then it wouldn't make any sense for us to go to Dylan, go to Above and Beyond and come back to main stage. Like you kind of have to factor it off of like who's before and after as well and what you can easily get to. Jose said he would cry. Claudia said, oh man, the feels of this question. It will never be easy to decide. You could decide for the one that the, uh, you could decide for the one that either another DJ you want to see goes before or after. Another way you can make the choice could be what stage you're at already. Um... Jared said, I factor in whether or not I've seen the artist or artists beforehand during the year. Sometimes, depending on where the stage is located, I'll think about that so I can plan ahead where I'm going to go afterwards. Usually, I'll make the conscious decision and split the sets half at one, half at the other. So a lot of compromising to go here. Austin said, half of each if I'm solo. If I'm with a group, then I'm going to get a drink for another 25 minutes. That's awesome. Tony said, I do half of each. Sarah said, in the past, I've split it up half and half, but I've learned it's better to just choose one. Better to fully enjoy a single set instead of half-assing both, plus the travel in between cuts into your music time. I totally agree. I would would say at this point, not having been to a festival in a year and a half, so I'm going to be fucking rusty, but I think at this point, I I wouldn't split anymore unless it was like really long sets that I could still like get 45 minutes out of each. I would pick. I would pick and choose. Ryan said half and half in the past, but now it's who I've seen less or who I won't see in a while. Um, Cynthia said, I consider the location of the set and what else is around that I'm going to catch before or after. She considers, um, have I seen the artist before? How big is my chance of seeing them again in the future? These are all things I mentioned. Yep. Um, Usually I try to catch most of one set and the tail end of the other or the beginning of one and the bulk of the other. I try not to get too worked up about it, though, if I do end up missing somebody I wanted to see. I've also missed sets not because of conflicts, but because I was going hard and lost track of time and someone in my group usually needed a breather. Yeah, you got to factor in. You never know what's going to happen, right? Like stuff always pops up in the moment. Um, Russ said, I always stick with one artist the whole way. I like listening to sets to near completion as long as I like the artist. If the set isn't making me dance, then I will leave and go to another one. Yep, Michelle said see a bit of both if I can. Oh, one of my friends too, Garrett, said that what he normally does is he'll stand in the back of the stage. So he'll split his time and he'll stand in the back because if you can't go up to the front. Like if you're going to go up to the front, you're never going to get to the other set. So yeah, if you kind of just want to vibe out in the back or a little bit in the middle, so that way you can easily get out and run over to another set, that's a good option as well. Um, Jerome said, I usually see the beginning of the set of the artist I want to see the most because the intro is the best. Watch about half and then I venture off to the other set. The worst conflict I ever experienced was EDC Las Vegas 2018 at midnight when Cascade was playing Kinetic and Virtual Self was at Circuit Grounds. I chose to watch Cascade first and Virtual Self. I remember that. I think I was at Virtual Self actually. Um, Mitzi says, oh man, it's so hard. I usually try to weigh out my options. If I've seen someone already or I'm going to see them again, I'll leave halfway through their set unless I'm really feeling it. Armin and Zed's Dead played at the same time at EDC 2019 and I couldn't leave Armin. However, if I don't have a chance to see someone again, I'll miss somebody 
I've seen before to ensure I can get a set in. Unless it's seven lines, then I never miss his set. <laughs> Same. That will never happen. Um, a lot. Yeah, guys, really, a lot of splitting. I'm pretty shocked. Um, or I'll s- just pick one. I'll just make the decision. Chloe said, I go with what I'm feeling at that time. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, because you just never know. I mean, I've, I've talked about this before. I've seen him since, and he's incredible. But my group just wasn't feeling Cascade at, like, I think it was EDC 2017, And it was a long set and we went to circuit grounds and we stayed for a half an hour and we were just like, this, it wasn't the vibe. It just wasn't the vibe in the moment. And we didn't have anybody else planned because we were like, we're seeing Cascade for the next hour and a half. And it was the best. We walked around and we just went to the other stages and just popped in. So like that kind of stuff is great too, because then you just discover stuff and you feel like you're, it's no rush. You're just walking around leisurely, like checking out the festival. That is the best factor in time like that, you guys. Also, I'm going off on a tangent now, but you have to factor in bathrooms, like bathroom breaks and food and water breaks too. Everyone always like, you know, in the app, you'll usually pick your set times and it's like one thing into the next, into the next. That's not a reality, right? Like you're going to have to stop and go to the bathroom. And if you're with a big group, that could be a 15 minute excursion. Fill up your water. How long is the line on the water line? Like all of these things take time. So don't forget to factor all of that in as well. But I think... That's pretty much it, you guys. Um, Everyone's kind of saying it just depends. Shirley said, honestly, I've realized that some people, the Shirley said, honestly, I've realized that sometimes the people I plan to see are not as fun as I thought. Yep. So I just go with the flow now and I stay where the vibes are the best and where I have the best time. I could not agree with that anymore. Thank you guys so much for your feedback on all of this. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear what you think, guys. Like, let me know. Chime in in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. Let me know what you guys think about set time conflicts. Honestly, at this point, it's been so long without a festival. I'm like, I can't even wait for the set time conflicts. It all is going to feel good. So oh, I'm going to lose my mind at ARC, guys. It will be almost two years, two years since I've been at a festival. That's bananas. Alrighty, with all of that being said, let's just jump into some news and then I'll let you guys go. Also, let me know your feedback on these shorter episodes. If you like these, you know, like 25 minute ones versus an hour, Um, I'm going to try and keep doing these every now and then. But what do we have for news? Uh, We have a couple festival announcements. So your Lost Lands 2021 lineup is here. It's fire. Um, Honestly, I haven't seen too many people's like reactions to it. Obviously, I'm not like a I've never done Lost Lands. I'm not a huge like bass head, but there were some house artists on there. So I thought the lineup was really good this year. Um, But if you're like a hardcore bass fan, I don't know if you would think it's too like soft or anything like that. But yeah, that is out there. Another thing I saw Excision post, which I thought was really, really cool. I'll read this um, message to you guys. So he said, headbangers, with the first run of shows this year already done, the team and I realized we have a ton of awesome content to share that you haven't seen yet. Everything from photos and videos of other artists sets to shots of you all vibing out in the crowd and more. Since there's too much content to be able to post everything on Excision socials, we wanted to create new social accounts to showcase all of the artists and fans at our events. So the goal is to spotlight every important aspect of our shows, so I'm excited to launch the new social account for Excision Presents. So you guys, they have an Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook group um, at Excision Presents, which is awesome. So give that a follow. They're going to be celebrating fans and shooting like extra content and all that really cool stuff so I think that's awesome excision's always been about his community so I think that's a really good idea um in other news gold rush dropped this incredible lineup guys are you kidding me if I wasn't already traveling like six times this fall I would have bought tickets to this no questions asked so this is September 24th 25th and 26th at the Rawhide um, Western Town Event Center. So Arizona, what's up? I mean, I don't know that much about Gold Rush. I know the scene in Phoenix is pretty cool, but you've got like Above and Beyond, Camel Fat, Chris Lorenzo, Back to Back, Wax Motif, Closey, Cray, Dombreski, Diplo, Gorgon City, Green Velvet, Elenium, Jaws, Jessica Autofred, Kill the Noise, Nightmare, Noise Zoo, Side piece, sudden death, Troy Boy, vintage culture, Zed, and a Zed's Dead back to back Grizz set. And that's not even everybody. I missed a bunch of really big names. Unreal. That is such a good combination of like really good bass artists, 
house you've got in there. You've got a little bit of trance, little tech house. Like that's absolutely incredible. So I would not be surprised if this completely sells out. I have a wedding that weekend. Otherwise I would be there, but that is awesome. We are also less than 50 days away from ARC Music Festival, which I'm so excited for. Um, they've been slowly releasing little teasers of what their stages are going to look like. So if you guys are going, you can check that out on their Instagram page. Um, on my YouTube channel, if you guys don't already subscribe over there, I have tons of content, a ton, a ton of content coming up for festival season. So I've been starting to like churn that out. So I have like, you know, festival guides to ARC, EDC Orlando. My EDC Vegas content is about to start. I think next up I'm going to do an ARC Music Festival outfit ideas. Imagine I have so much coming up. So if you guys aren't subscribed already, um, definitely check that out. I have tons of festival tips and advice for specific events. And last but certainly not least, Elro announced that they are starting a new event, Elro Island. Again, with these events, I can't. This is September 9th to the 12th. It's in Croatia on a private island. Four days and three nights, only 830 fans, 72 hours of nonstop music. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I would go to that in literally a second. That sounds absolutely immaculate. Croatia, Elvar, like all of the house music. So if you guys are international or if you need a trip, I would re highly recommend going to Elro. So um, I'm actually going to be last thing and I'll let you go. I'm going to Elro's show this weekend in New York City. So if you guys are going, I hope to see you there. I will be running around. Um, it's my first Elro experience and I cannot fucking wait. It's going to be absolutely insane. So that's what I've got coming up this weekend. Um, you guys know the drill again. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or make this your Instagram stories. Um, you can tag at Rave Culture Cast. We're on everything, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and I think that's it. You guys can join the Facebook group community or the Discord. And again, if you need tickets to EDC Orlando, I will link that down below in the show notes. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you in my next episode. Bye guys. Oh, 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 oh,